So hello again. Today we're going to be talking about the XOR gate. So this is a certain type of OR gate that ignores when both of the inputs are 1. So basically a typical OR gate would be 1, 1, 1 here. And then the XOR, which stands for exclusive OR, will take out this 1 and turn it into a 0. So that's the difference between the XOR and the OR gate. It is shown just like an OR gate, but with an extra line at the end. This circuit will help us simplify more complex systems and allow us to kind of minimize our circuit design. So let's see how we can implement this in an actual circuit. We have our function right here that we are going to simplify using an XOR. So let's keep on doing what we were doing and find all of the one terms and then write the sum of products. So here we have A naught, B naught, C, and so on. Okay, so we have our first four terms. We're gonna write the function. So now that we have our function, we are gonna try to see if algebraically we can factor anything out. So as you can see, there is an A here. This gate is something that doesn't really work well with normal minimization techniques so it's something that you're gonna have to spot on your own so that's why it's very important to have the concept very clear I just want to clarify that XOR first of all is represented with a plus sign in a circle and A XOR B is equal to a naught B or B naught A. We are combining two terms with their complements and their non complements. So let's try to find, see if we can get any of those occurrences in the function. So we can factor an A naught here. A naught B naught. So once we factor out, this is what we're going to have left. Let me just show what we're factoring out pretty clearly. That's what we're factoring out. We have B naught C or B C naught or A B naught C or A B C. This was supposed to be a C naught. There we go. And now that we have this we can already see a similarity between this property and this term. So we can say that this is actually B X or C, A naught. Now we're gonna factor out A out of here. So then we have A, B, B naught C or B C naught. And then again, we will have another X or. Again, we're looking to see a similarity between this function and what we ended up having after we factored out the A. A very important thing to remember is that XOR gates can only have two inputs. You can go around it by cascading two XOR gates. Okay, so here we have another XOR, so we're going to write that down as B XOR C. So this is going to be a funny function because it will simplify to something very simple. Now if you remember our Boolean algebra, we can factor out this term right here, which is equal to this term. And once we do that, we have B X or C and A naught or A. Now also again, remember in our Boolean algebra, this term right here will always equal 1 because it is the variable and its complement. That means that since there are only two options, you're going to end up having a 1 there. And OR with a 1 is always going to be 1. So in this case, our function simplifies to simply B, X, or C. So even though we were given this really complex, you know, three variable function, we were able to simplify it down to a one gate circuit. Because in this case, the value of A is not impacting, the value of A has no input into F. 
The only things that have input into f are b and c. And that's why we were able to simplify it so much. Sometimes it won't be so drastic, the change, but it's definitely very helpful to see because, you know, something that could have been a lot of terms simplifies down to a very nice, elegant circuit. So it's very important to remember, and it's something that will not, we will not be able to do with K-maps. So I would definitely review this algebra and try to practice if you can see where you can find an XOR and when you don't find an XOR. And that's mostly it. Thank you so much.